This is the type of game that I really wish had a jam-packed Scotiabank Arena tonight. The Raptors welcoming the Miami Heat in the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Now, they played on the back-to-back -back as well. They were playing the Boston Celtics. So, there's really no excuses going out on that front. But the Raptors welcome in the Heat. And they win 110-106. Raps have now won three consecutive games. or 26-23 on the season. And damn it, Gary... Flippin' Trent Jr. continues his ridiculous play. And he ties DeMar DeRozan for the record of 30-point 30, 30 performances in a row with five. He looks to break that record next game on Thursday against DeMar. Wouldn't that be something? But let's break this game down from the start. And it did not start pretty. The Raptors in the first quarter couldn't make shots, couldn't get stops. It was a bad all-around quarter. You're stuck 10 after one quarter of play. But we have seen time and time again with this Raptors squad, this, this, this game is never over after the first quarter, right? Unless you lose the quarter by like 25 or whatever nonsense that was against, um, oh, you guys in Portland, I believe. Yeah, other than that nonsense, you're right in this game. Now, second quarter, yeah, you find your energy a bit, but you're still minus two, 30 to 28 in the quarter. You allow 63 points in the first half, and you, you score, you know, 50. And it's just not good enough. You're down 12 at the break. And the defensive intensity has to pick up. Bam Adebayo is getting things way too easy inside, I, albeit he's a strong-ass man. So he is going to have his way. He, in, the, in the first matchup against the Raptors, he didn't do very well. But today, oh, Bam was great. And the Raptors did in the second half, they made him work for it. And that just it changed the entire complexity of the game. They started playing their active defense as they have been, you know, more often than not lately. And in that third quarter, not only does Fred Van Vliet start taking shots, and we've talked about him lately going 6 of 20 from the field quite often, and we're like, man, he's got tired legs. He didn't shoot very much early on in the game. I believe he might have only taken like five shots of the half, and I'm like, or, or even in the early going to the third quarter, something like that. I mean, he really wasn't taking a lot of shots early. But when the third quarter started, and he's like, okay, it's time to go, and it's time to make shots, the guy knocks down big three. I think he has 11 points in the third quarter alone. The Raptors win that one 30 to 21. You're plus nine in the quarter and you're only down by three heading into the fourth quarter. And in that fourth, yeah, some other guys made some impact, but Gary Trent Jr. took over. At big moments in this game, about five minutes ago, two shots over PJ Tucker. Put him on an island, get skating. How you doing? OG Ananobi, oh yeah, Jimmy Butler, how you doing? Get, gets, the, gets the poster going on, Jimmy Butler turns the corner and throws it down the two-handed slap. And it's not like Jimmy Butler met him at the rim and just went over top of him. No, Jimmy Butler met him about, uh, I don't know, if it was outside the key there or what, underneath the bucket. And he went right through him. He, he took him to the bucket. If you watch the replay, Jimmy went up, the contact happened, and OG is like he kept going forward, and he just threw... Uh, it was an absolutely monstrous two-handed slam from OG. Arguably the best dunk of the season so far for the Toronto Raptors, arguably. And the Raptors, at one point, have like a six-point lead, and we're like, this is great. Now you got to close this game out. Now it was back and forth down the stretch. We see guys... We see Pascal make a big three. You saw Precious, Precious, knock down a big corner three. And obviously Gary Trent Jr. getting it done and defensively. The Raptors did a heck of a job uh, closing this game out. And they win that fourth quarter 30-23. to 23, And they win this game 110-106. I mean, it was a really wild end of this game, though, because the Raptors kind of allowed Miami to hang around. Scotty Barnes allowing the, the, the drive to the 10, and he was visibly upset with that, whether it was nobody helping him or whatever the case was, the N1 from Bam. And a couple of easy buckets late to kind of hang them around in there. It was a two-point game, and I believe it was pressed on the inbound, and uh, they called the timeout to kind of get things figured out here. I forgot exactly what happened there. And, and Scotty Barnes on the inbound play up the floor. 
And he, instead of inbounding it to Fred or Pascal, I mean, like heck, you want to fire it to Precious, he goes right to the rim to OG. And on the inbound play, you can do that. It's not, you know, you're not in the cylinder or whatnot. No, 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 you're, you're good. And Scotty fired it there. OG has kind of tapped it home to seal the deal to give the Raptors that 110-106. But a great pass from Scotty. Way to get up there and finish it for OG. And the Raptors, two times in four days, beat the Miami Heat. The once number one seed in the Eastern Conference with the loss tonight for Miami and Chicago beating the Orlando Magic. Chicago is now first and they are second. Meanwhile, the Toronto Raptors have now won three consecutive games for 26 and 23. And they're starting to find themselves now. And the crazy thing about this Raptor squad, at any given night, someone can drop 20. Right? You had Pascal dropping 25 last night. You had, you had Fred with 21 today. We've seen Scotty go off and get you, obviously, the career high 20, uh, whatever it was, against Washington. And OG, I mean, he can do it on any given night. We've seen that countless times. And you got 12 off the bench for Precious. You know what I mean? It, obviously, we all know what this team needs if they're going to make a little push moving forward into the playoffs is some bench help, some shooting off the bench. If Atlanta's not in it uh, down the stretch, then a guy like Bogdanovich would be an interesting candidate. I listened to the Raptors show Will, with William Lou today, and they were firing a bunch of trade proposals, and he was one of the names out there that Will was firing around. And I think that would be a great fit for this team. A guard that could possibly come off the bench, because about 50% of the guy's career, he's come off the bench. That would be an interesting one if Atlanta's not in that mix. But again, that team has made the Eastern Conference Finals last year, so I don't know if they're ready to send that off, but it's going to be interesting to see how things roll in the next couple of weeks before the deadline. But let's keep going with this game because let's roll through the team stats. I mean, our player stats, I haven't even touched those yet. Pascal Siakam, he get he off night shooting wise, right? He shot five of 14 from the field, was one of three from three, five of seven from the line. But he did give you a double double, 16 points, 14 rebounds, and four assists. But what Pascal gave you is the defensive end. And he was a monster, an absolute monster on that side of the ball tonight. When when Precious and Scotty were getting eaten alive by Bam Adebayo, they put Pascal on him. And Pascal doesn't move. He was a brick wall against Bam. Fantastic game for Pascal on the defensive side of the ball. He was remarkable. Still drops a double-double. Great job for Pascal. Adds three steals to the game as well. Why not? The MVP in the game, no doubt, for the second consecutive game. Is Gary Trent Jr. 32 points, two boards, one dime, 11 of 20 shooting, 5 of 8 from the line, which is not characteristic of him, 6 of 10 from three-point range. He had nine yesterday, and six more today. Gary is red, red hot. He's been fantastic. Scotty Barnes, an off night defensively, and shooting-wise, he just looks very hesitant at times. Still, though, 11 points, nine rebounds, a couple assists. 5 of 13 from the field was 1 of 2 from 3, but he struggled mightily in the defensive end against Bam. It, I mean, <laughs> Bam's a massive human being, so I understand that, but uh, he really had an off night tonight, and that's okay for Scotty. He'll have that. So it's the rookie thing. He's your number 5 option really on the floor. I get it. Whatever. He'll learn from it. No problem. I'm not worried about Scotty at all. Fred Van Vliet. Oh, we talked about that, how he you know didn't start out the game as an offensive juggernaut. He's kind of looking to see if everybody else can get it going. Then once the third quarter starts and we're down by 12, he's like, all right, I'll turn it on now. And like I said earlier, he dropped 11 in that in the third quarter. Ends with 21, four, point, four rebounds and six assists on five of 11 shooting, nine of 11 from the free throw line, two of six from three, and three steals and a block. So like I said, we talked about the, you know, 20, six of 20 shooting yesterday. He, he was five of 11 from the field today. He only took 11 shots. And we're so used to those double-digit three-point shots. He only took six. So he did a lot of other things. He gave you three steals and a block in the game. Just Fred Van Bleet, man, just put in the damn work. He, he's been phenomenal. OG and OB, 13 points, three, rebound, or three rebounds, three assists on six of ten from the field. Knocked down some big-time shots. And, of course, the post on Jimmy. He was fantastic. And, uh, and Precious off the bench. You know, defensively, he looked a little wild. And there was a couple of offensive possessions. He looked a little out of sorts. But 12 points, 7 boards, 1 dime. 5 of 7 from the field. 2 of 3 from 3-point three range. One of those threes in the fourth quarter. Had a steal and a block. And anyway, I think it was a minus 1 on the floor. So we didn't really hurt your team while he was out there. Precious, he was good tonight against his former team. And don't you love it, though? When he knocked down that corner 3, 
He turns around to the bench as he's running away. Yeah, he could have just, you know, knocks down the three, run. No, he turned, did that, and then spun around and faced the bench and ran off. I'm like, oh, oh, oh against his former squad. No, no, no. I love that stuff from Precious. Great job from the young fella. Going to the Rising Stars game. Him and Scotty. That's fantastic. We knew Scotty was going, but Precious make an appearance in the Rising Stars uh, games. That's really, really good to see for him. Now, let's get to the team stats. Miami shot 49% from the field and 27% from three-point range. So struggling. My a really good three-point shooting team struggled mightily shooting the three. And 88% from the free throw line, they were very good there. The Raptors, 48% from the field. So very similar there. But as they were yesterday, money from three-point range. Now, not that 50% from yesterday, but 46 very close to it. Great job of shooting the three for the Toronto Raptors. For, like I said, 46% from three-point range. 69% from the free throw line. So, again, the free throw line really, I think they missed nine free throw attempts in this game. So, you got to clean that stuff up. You know, those freebies, they got to go down if you're, if you're going to try and make this push into the postseason. Because if you're going to, those ones, they got to be made. They have to be, because in key moments, you're going to get free throws. We saw that against, uh, was it Atlanta, where Pascal missed two of them. You're luckily he didn't come back to haunt you, but you got to knock down your free throws. They didn't tonight, and luckily they came away with the victory because they were shooting the three lights out in the second half. They would score the Heat in the second half, 60-44. to 44. What is that, 64? Yeah, 60-44, to 44, plus 16 in the, core, in the second half, so they were great. Minus 12 in points in the paint. Uh, so it was pretty ugly there, but that's a test to Bam Adebayo going to work inside early in the game. And um, offensive boards. The Raptors were plus five, and they were also plus nine in the second chance points category. So off of those extra opportunities. And turnovers, they had one more turnover than the Toronto Raptors did. However, we were plus five in the points off of turnovers, so making them pay for their mistakes. So if you look at that and look at the second chance points, more or less extra opportunities, you were plus 14 in that combined. So very important stuff for the Raptors tonight and doing a job there. Now, we turn our focus to game three of this four and five stretch and uh, they won the first two. The back-to-back -back complete. You beat Atlanta in Atlanta. You come back home to take on Miami. You beat them in Toronto. So let's uh, welcome in DeMar DeRozan and the Chicago Bulls to town on Thursday night. 7.30 tip-off as the Raps look for a win number four in a row. And Gary Trent Jr. looks to break DeMar DeRozan's record as a Toronto Raptor. So that will be very exciting with DeMar in the building. Wouldn't that be nice for GT? GTJ to get it done uh, on home court, all right? So, you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed the game this evening, smack that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already. Comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from today's game today for the Toronto Raptors? The Twitter link is down below. So, follow up. Send me a DM to that great stuff. The Instagram link is also down below. So, follow up there if you have not done so already. I will talk to you guys. Leave decision. Very, they won 7 1 tonight against the Devils. No, no nonsense in today's game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. We'll talk very shortly that. And for the Toronto Raptors, as we mentioned, they take on the Chicago Bulls on Thursday night, looking to go 1-3 and three on the season series against the Bulls. So far, 0-1-2. As they welcome in Debo. 7.30 tip-off there at Scotiabank Arena. We're looking for a win number four in a row. And I believe, I believe, wouldn't they go four over 500 for the first time this year? I'm pretty sure you guys can fact-check me there, but let me know anyways, all right? So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.